As the authorized DuPont Vespel distributor, we at AIN Plastics have learned some key things about working with this material that we wanted to share with you so you can have the best experience with this product the first time and every time you use it. Throughout this video, we have some tables. Don't worry about writing the information down. These technical data sheets are available for download on our site at ainplastics.com. Parts machine from DuPont Vespel shapes are ideal for prototype, low volume, or complex geometry parts. And due to its unique set of properties, Vespel has also been specified by the aircraft industry. Vespel is an easy product to work with and requires just standard use of safety glasses, gloves, and earplugs. Keep materials for smoking, eating, or drinking out of the area because airborne particles can contaminate them. Use proper ventilation and be sure to thoroughly wash up after working to remove any dust particles you may come into contact with. Next up is tooling. Your choice should be made based on your volume and expected tool life. Bus bell cuts easily using a standard band saw. For pieces over 5 inches thick, consider using coolant and for a filled bus bell, an alloy blade. Plastics can deform if held too tightly, so the first question is how to hold it. The two most reliable methods are an OD or ID collet. The other option is a six jaw type chuck, which will distribute pressure evenly. To turn DuPont bus bell, simply use a standard lathe with chucker or screw machining techniques. Use carbide tipped or diamond tipped tools for work that requires close tolerances and consider using chip breaker tools. Before starting, hone cutting edges until they are sharp and have a nose radius of 0 0.003 to 0 0.008 inches. For cutting speed, consider a range similar to that of what we'd use for machining brass. If heat begins to build up, a coolant should be used to minimize thermal effects and to maintain dimensional stability. If chatter occurs, double check tool sharpness and check to see if the tool is extended too far from the holder. Overall, milling and routing DuPont Vest Bell works very similarly to working with brass. In this example, we are climb milling in which we use multiple passes to achieve the desired shape. Grinding in multiple passes can achieve close tolerances without heat buildup. If you're working with Teflon filled material, always use coolant and for large parts, rough machine first. This will all help to maintain dimensional stability. When drilling, think about the end result you need to achieve first. Shallow holes can be done with a standard twist drill, spade, or gun drills with high pressure coolant to reduce chip buildup. Drill deep blind holes by rough drilling before your final cut. As you drill, watch for higher coefficient of thermal expansion. Your drill can also be slightly modified to work better with Vest Bell. Variations can be reducing the diameter along the full length of the drill body except for the leading 1 8 inch behind the lands, increasing lip clearance 25 to 30 degrees, and for drills 1 inch or larger, the thickness of the standard drill web can be reduced. For a good surface finish, stick to speeds used with steel. After drilling, holes can be tapped using a standard metal tap. Feed in several passes to avoid thermal expansion. If chip out is an issue, use a drill with a 5 degree end relief or end mill. If possible, feed material in automatically or ease up on feed pressure at breakthrough. In general, speeds of 40 to 50 feet per minute will produce good results. To finish your DuPont Vespel parts, burrs can easily be removed by using the same methods you would for metal parts. You can also tumble parts in vibrating or rotating deburring equipment. On thin wall parts or surfaces with less than a 90 degree angle, watch for chipping. If that is an issue, a diamond lapping block with 320 grit can be used instead. DuPont Vespel parts can be polished to a high gloss using conventional muslin wheels. Keep the Vespel surface clear and free of being impregnated with diamond or aluminum oxide compounds by doing the following. Use a wet or dry abrasive paper, approximately 600 grit, something that will contain the grit. Use a granite surface plate or equivalent to maintain surface flatness and add a light machine oil as a vehicle. Final lapping with a crocus cloth will result in an even finer finish and polish can be achieved by lapping shapes with craft or tablet paper. In our final step, we check dimensions. If using a micrometer, don't use it in the normal fashion. This could cause the part to deform slightly and your reading won't be accurate. Instead, use it as a go and no-go gauge by setting your tolerance first, then passing the part through the gap. Set the micrometer to the upper limit and use it as a go gauge. On thin-walled parts, a correctly sized inside diameter plug may be inserted to minimize distortion. A plug gauge is preferred, but avoid forcing the plug gauge into the hole. Another option for inside diameters is an air gauge. And that's it! 
Now that you've learned these simple guidelines, you're ready to work with DuPont Festpel, one of the most durable and versatile polymid products on the market. For more detail, you can download a printable brochure from our website at ainplastics.com. This brochure provides all the tables and guides you saw during our brief video here, so you can have them all at your fingertips. For detailed information about each Festpel material, you can download technical data, and for more questions, please call Ain Plastics, your authorized DuPont Vespel distributor, toll-free at 877-246-7700.